All right, what's up? Tim Sykes here, back with Jack Kellogg. $12.2 million in profits. We're going over all the lessons from the wins and the losses. The 12.2 includes the losses too. We don't just show all of our wins. Um, but what we've been talking about, and if you click the links below, you can see some of the other um, you know, episodes, I guess you can call them, of what we're talking about today, where you're learning the process to grow your account exponentially. You're learning to hopefully differentiate between different accounts, different strategies. You really got to get granular. You really got to be meticulous if you want to succeed, if you want to grow your account exponentially. In this video, I want to talk more about, you know, the, what you can do now that you have the money. Because a lot of people need inspiration. A lot of like wealthy people, they don't talk about what it's like to be wealthy. It's like taboo. We're not trying to brag. We're just trying to help guide you. I wish someone had made videos like this when I first made a lot of money. So for like my new millionaire students, I always try to be kind of like a life guide, like showing them, you know, beautiful places like Dubai, um, you know, and really just staying true to how do you actually make millions from trading while also living. So in the past, how long has it been since you really started living better? Say two years. What's different now versus before? Give these people some hope. If you're gonna grind so hard, if they're gonna like, you know, just fry their brains trying to learn so much. What's the upside? Not just money. We're not talking about just money. 90% of traders lose. But what's the upside in life? What can you do now? I'd say something that not a lot of people talk about is security, right? So after you have money, you have more of this calmness and security that I have this money. So in my future, I can support my family. I have money so I can have buy little things in life that will give me more peace, that will find me more happiness. And I think it's that's a very important lesson. And also there's great stuff like this, like traveling. Like over the past two years, like me and Tim were talking Tim and I were talking about that I went to Arizona for the first time in 2020, my first time on a new time zone. And you're like, I hate this. I'm never traveling never again. <laughs> Right, the three hours really screwed me up, and now I, I'm, sleep, I'm, sleep, I'm sleeping better now than Tim, and uh, I, I'm traveling now good. Just took a took a nine or ten hour flight, then another four hour flight, four hour layover, and I've been completely fine. I've had good energy, and uh, it's just crazy that now I'm, I'm also learning to to travel. I'm I'm experiencing new food, and lots of new foods. Yeah, lots of new foods, and it's just happiness and it's really fun uh to be able to do this and to also have like the security like i told you and i know also my girlfriend uh mariana i can give her security that whatever we want to do whatever is going on in life for my family too i gave them a hundred thousand dollars uh my birthday which is almost exactly two years ago gave my family hundred thousand dollars have got to experience um now i have a car and a truck little materialistic things like that a couple watches whatever it is but it's just all these little things that i never would have had without learning trading without grinding without putting the work in that i've now gotten to experience which a lot of people don't experience and there, there also is a dark side to money don't get me wrong if you're a bad person and you make money it's just gonna it's gonna um exemplify your personality and you're gonna be just as bad, but not with money. But if you're a good person, like look at Tim, like he's matured a lot over the last 20 years of gaining money. Maybe you, you mess up at first and you're focused on the wrong things, but now he's donated millions of dollars to charity, has opened hundreds of new schools. And like I said, it just, it, it gives you the freedom and it, it, you can find your passion, right? You can find your passion or whatever, you like to do. I don't even necessarily believe that I've totally found my passion yet. I know that I'm happy. I know that me doing a bunch of these little things uh, makes me happy, but I haven't found like that one thing that I'm super, 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 super passionate about like Tim has with charity. Uh, but it makes me happy doing a little bit of, of everything, right? Uh, fishing, different activities, and it's, it's super fun. It's about quality of life yeah. and time. Most people don't have time because they're working for a job they hate, for a boss they hate. They can't wait for the weekend just because they're away from their miserable weekdays. Monday through Friday, they hate. They understand they need to work, you need a job, you have responsibilities, 
but you don't really take pride in it. You're not really gonna succeed that much because most jobs suck. Most businesses don't make very much money. We've kind of like, you know, gotten above the rat race. And that's what we want for you. Like, you know, to get above the rat race, to actually have time to find out what you love. Like Jack said a lot of great things just now. One thing I wanna focus on, it does take time. I didn't find charity right away. If you had told me I was gonna love charity, like I travel a lot, I've, I've always loved traveling, I dreamed of that as a kid. I never, never dreamt of like giving away money as a kid. Like if you had told me anywhere before the age of 30 that I would enjoy like giving money away and like really dedicating myself, sharing the, the charity stories on social media, meeting everybody involved, like trying to get them more money, trying to like do fundraiser, I would've been like, shut up, no way. But over time, like I got all my dream cars, I've lived like the materialistic life, it gets boring, it gets old. I found what makes me happy, but it took a while. Most people don't find what they're happy about or, or happiest with because they don't have even the time to test. Jack is still testing, but he's only 24. You're gonna be 25 in a few weeks. Everyone congratulate Jack and wish him a happy birthday, but he's on the right track. He now has that freedom. He's above the rat race. He doesn't have you know, a boss that he hates. He doesn't have to have like, you know, basic responsibilities like most people. Now he has the time to pursue different passions, whether it's traveling or fishing or, you know, like splurging on his family. I think it's always good to splurge on your family, by the way. That's some of the best money that I spent moving my family down from Connecticut uh, down to Miami and, and getting them pretty much whatever they want. Um, you need that time, okay? You have one life. I say this a lot, but you have one life. You got to make it count. And if you want this, hopefully we're like inspiring you. I'll throw a bunch of photos and videos. Um, many people want this life, but they're like, I'm not going to be the next millionaire. I'm not, I don't have time to even study. You have more time than you think. Okay. If you can study 15 minutes per night, if you can study an hour every two or three days, if you can sacrifice like a Saturday, if you say, okay, study Saturday, I'm going to like dedicate like six or eight hours every Saturday, you'll be shocked within, not necessarily overnight, but within three, four, five years, how that knowledge compounds if you put in time into studying finance. So many people waste so much time and like just opportunity on Netflix, going out, partying, like sitting by the pool and just like not wanting to think about their miserable reality, not realizing that you have the power to change your reality. We live in the most fascinating time in history. You can learn everything online. You don't need to spend, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on college. I understand like, you know, some, some degrees, like if you want to be a doctor or lawyer, you need college, but like for trading, for most things, you can learn this stuff online. This was never before possible 10 years ago, 20 years ago, right? Just us coming to you from Dubai, just Dubai itself. Dubai wasn't even here 20 plus years ago. It was literally just sand. Like, it's amazing what you can build, whether you're a city planner, whether you're a trader, it's amazing what you can accomplish over several years if, if you have that big goal, if you understand it's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm not saying that it's gonna happen overnight. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but you need to start right away. The sooner you start, the sooner you can succeed in the long run. It's, you know, Jack has made thousands of trades. I've made thousands of trades. He's learned thousands of lessons. I've learned tens of thousands of lessons. The more education that you have, the bigger and the better and the, the you know, more, I don't know how to say it, the more optimized your trading strategy is or investment strategy, or the more knowledgeable you are about finance, the more success you will have, the more time that creates. You gotta sacrifice the short term for a better long term. Do you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. And is that what you thought going into trading? Were you like, okay, I'm gonna learn all this stuff, I'm gonna sacrifice a few 100%. years? 100%, that was my exact thought process was, and it still is my thought process, right? Is that I sacrificed 18, 19, 20 to really 22, 22-ish, four years, solely dedicated myself into 10 to 13, 14 hours a day of just trading, whether I was trading and journaling after or tracking or studying and watching new lessons or just sitting in bed thinking about everything that happened that day. And it's, it's just about sacrificing those few years for me when I had the opportunity in this day and age to then set yourself up 
for that hot market, for that life-changing opportunity. And that's exactly what I did. It took a few, you know, several years, I would say. Uh, but when it came around, that's when I then made the difference in my life. And now I assume for the next 50, 60, 70 years, however long I'm gonna live. 100 years. 100 years, another 150 years, hopefully, is that I'm gonna be able to have all these experiences. I'm gonna be able to have this security. I'm gonna be able to have this freedom to live a life that is worth living and that brings an insane amount of just happiness and thoughts and everything. And I'm super excited. I'm still super young. And uh, who knows where this life's gonna take me, but I know I'm gonna find my passion and uh, I'm gonna excel at it. The sooner you can get started with your education and building the foundation of you know what works in the stock market and then what works in life, okay? Like you're playing a game of catch up. You know, we've already really optimized our trading process. We've really optimized our life. Like I'm still ahead of Jack and you know, figuring out what I love, but he's young, he's gonna do it. Like over the next five, 10 years, I'm excited. Um, you know, he's always been a fast learner. I'm excited to see what more he learns about himself, about the world. Um, you can't wait, right? People are like, oh God, it's gonna take so long to make money. Oh my God. Yes. So you need to start now. And again, use the weekend, use the nighttime, use whatever time you want. Even if you're in school, even if you have a job, I get it. You have responsibilities. Like, I'm not saying like just quit your job or like get out of school. I'm saying you have more time in the day. And if you are really um, conscientious about what time you, you put into different things, you have so much time in this life. I know people say like life is short. It's not that short in the beginning, especially if you have a miserable life. It feels like forever, right? Like if you're sitting there in the office job and you're getting paid, but like you hate it and you're just looking at the clock, you're like, I can't wait for the weekend. I can't wait for the weekend. Life is not short. Life is miserable. It's like a prison. It's like you're a wild animal trapped in a zoo. Don't even get me started on that. But like you have so much time that you're wasting and you're angry, you're frustrated. It can be fixed. The cool thing is if you're angry, if you're frustrated, use that anger, use that frustration to push yourself. It's not the end of the world. I've had down times, I've had losses. I, it's not like I've like always just been perfect. Sometimes you, you need that anger, you need that frustration to really help propel you. You have anger and frustration issues, tell them about it. What, yeah. what, what gave you like this, you know, just crazy ambition and this crazy work ethic? What, what, what gave you that thought process? What helped you get in the right mindset to really push yourself? Because a lot of people need that push. They're like, oh, Jack's a really hard worker. Oh, Tim, you know, you're, you're like talented. I'm not that talented. Jack is a hard worker. But again, we have that fire. I'm thankful for my haters. I always say this, like people are like, oh, Tim, you have all these imposters, you have all these haters. And I say, thank you. I wouldn't work this hard without my haters. Yeah. If people didn't say that I, you know, couldn't create any millionaires that I shouldn't be teaching penny stocks, that made me push harder. When I first got started teaching, people said, oh, shorting penny stocks is illegal. You're a criminal. I was like, you've been shorting for years. You're just an idiot. That ignorance, that that like I, even as I'm saying this, my blood is boiling because it's like I hate misinformation. That's what drives me. That's what fuels me. What fuels you? Or what has fueled you in the past? Because you're not as angry anymore. Yeah, I've talked about it a little bit in previous videos, but I guess I haven't really talked about it in a long time. And that was just growing up. I was an only child and I was, I was stuck in my house for several years, 18 years of growing up before I moved out. And uh, so it really, your childhood and growing up that first 15 to 20 years really creates who you are down to the roots because- It molds you. It molds you. Who, that's who you are is who you were as a child, right? And I've, I've just learned about that recently. Um, but I was, I was really just stuck in my parents' house and my, my parents didn't really get along very well. I was an only child. I didn't have too many outlets. So I was just sitting there in my house. There wasn't a ton of privacy. It was a very small house. And I was just sitting there all the time, just constantly thinking like, 
F this, F that, like this sucks. I'm stuck in a small town. There's only 75 people in my, my high school class. Small town in Connecticut. We're both from small yeah. towns in Connecticut. If you're from Crazy. Connecticut, congratulations. You were born into a crappy state. You have that fuel. Sorry, yep. interrupt. Yeah, no doubt. And I'd say like a lot of my other friends, like they had siblings, they had more money. Like even though we were in a small town, um there wasn't a lot of business there so just people you know wealthier folks kind of lived in the town and then there you also had people of course that didn't have as as much money so in the town like there is a mountain right and there's a hierarchy uh, yeah there's You're a hierarchy at the bottom. uh-huh and i was down uh in the swamp at the bottom of the mountain in the gutter in the gutter and all of my friends were you know at the top of the mountain um and so that and to get in also to people telling me like, oh, you can't do this. Just growing up in school, I was bottom 10%, like how to get special help uh, to learn how to read and stuff like that. Um, and just constantly having people that were making fun of me. Uh, also even like teachers um, would make fun of me, all this kind of stuff. So it was just constantly throughout my entire life, just kind of being put down uh, by your family, by your peers, by your teachers, whoever it is. But there's a couple terrible. Of, they should yeah. fire those teachers. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Screw you, Bolton teachers. You suck. You're supposed to shape our youth. But thank you for your ignorance and your hatred because you created a monster of work ethic and ambition. Mm -hmm. And he took your negativity and he smothered it and he turned it into success. Hell yeah. I love it. And there was always a couple outlets that I did have, right? I love playing sports and I also love playing video games. So that's what I did kind of growing up. And that gave me this competitive nature. This also gave me this um, being on the computer, playing games, being quick, thinking quickly. And also I was, I, the only thing that I've ever been good at um, regarding like school is always quick math, right? Like if you give me like division, multiplication, um, subtraction, whatever it is, I'm, I'm usually pretty quick to figure it out. Like even with share size, like, like a lot of people are like, okay, 70,000 shares, 10 cents, seven grand, whatever it is, dollar share, 70 grand, um, 35 cents, whatever it is on the amount of shares that you have. I was, I was always able to calculate it so quick and people that were more smart than me, um, who got better grades in school, who didn't have trouble learning to read, write, whatever it is, trouble spelling, trouble talking. Um, I was always able to do quicker math than them. And I was like, wow, this is a gift, right? That I have is that I can just, I'm good with numbers. I'm good with simple numbers. I'm not good at algebra. I'm not good at geometry. I'm not good at math that's higher but simple math i was always very good at so that also was good in the stock market to quickly calculate um what's my average going to be if i average down here if i average up here what's my risk going to be what's my private target going to be so that in combination with the stock market it right when i found trading i was like this is the perfect fit right penny stocks they're made for people that are are more dumb right so people that are gar uh, garbage truck drivers that want to buy their wife a new diamond ring what, whatever it is so i fit right into that in combination with the work ethic that I was built upon by people in my life from my childhood. And then with the, the video games and the competitive uh, nature from, from sports, it, all these three things added up into trading, which was my, my perfect thing. And then on top of that, then hitting that, that right market. So it was a lot of things that all came together and that's how you're, you're really able to go from, I mean, my, my parents, they didn't make, uh, much money at all. I mean, my dad makes like 70 grand a year, mom, school bus driver making like 30 grand a year, 40 grand a year, whatever it is. And like, I should not be where I am right now at all. You know what I mean? Like, this is not like what my path was when I was born, but I put, you change your path. Yeah. I changed my path. I changed the future generations of my blood, future Kellogg's, future Kellogg's by putting in that work and it's just all these little things that add up when you're a childhood and it's either who you're going to be or it's not, you know, it, it all depends on these things, all these things that add up. You have to figure out your strengths and weaknesses. He talked about sports. He talked about video games. He talked about math, the work ethic, the, you know, quick thinking that really helps as a trader. I'm not that good at math, but I was also sports. I think sports is really good for teaching you work ethic. If you want to succeed in sports, like you have to really not just be good at the sports, but also like work on your fitness. Like there's a lot of things that goes into it. Um, a lot of the, several of my top students are like, you know, have pro or semi-pro backgrounds. 
You know, Roland was like a great soccer player. Matt Monaco was like a great golfer. Um, I go on, there's a lot of examples. But the point is, you have to really fine tune your, your work ethic, your ambition. You have to maximize your skill set. You have to minimize what you're not good at. Don't be afraid to ask for extra help. Don't give in to the negativity. If your teachers, if your family, if your friends, if anybody is negative, I always say this, weed out negative people from your life. And if it's your teacher, like you can't choose, you're in school, just learn to ignore them and learn to like use that as fuel. Like, I don't know, I, I want Jack to watch the Michael Jordan 10 part documentary because like he did a great job. Like Michael Jordan wasn't always like the best at basketball. He worked his butt off. Kobe worked his butt off. Ronaldo worked their butt off. Like a lot of the top sports stars, you don't see the time they put in when the cameras aren't there, when the fans aren't there. They're working in the off season. You need to remember the negativity. Don't let it like push you down, but remember it and then be like, I'm going to prove them wrong. If someone says you're not that smart, you're never going to succeed. You say, watch me, you know, use that as fuel for your fire. Like no different than like Eminem. It's not just sports stars. Eminem had a very troubled life and he wrote it all down and he created these beats. And now, you know, Eminem's music sucks because he has no more anger. He's too rich. Like he can't he can't, he can't be his old self. Sometimes it's good to have that anger. It's good to have those doubters. Like I'm so grateful. If you're one of my doubters or haters, please hate on me. Tweet at me, leave a terrible message in the comments below. Think that Jack is like a paid actor. Think that like my trades are fake. I love the negativity. I thrive off the negativity and the conspiracy theories because people are so moronic that I'm just gonna show you more millionaire traders. I'm gonna show you more top lessons. And it's going to feed me that fuel. I take all the negativity and I consume it as if it's a freaking omakase dinner at a Japanese restaurant. Feed me. <laughs> Don't let it get you down. A lot of people watching this, you have someone in your life, many people in your life, or many people that you just come in contact with, and they're very narrow-minded or they're very negative based on their own experience, based on you know, whatever happened in their own life and they're trying to transfer that negativity to other people. They don't even know how to be positive. We live not just in the most fascinating time in history, but even if you have the negative people around you, even if you're from a small town, even if you don't necessarily have that many skill sets, you can learn it. You just need that little push. I wish I could come through here and just push you, just push you to do what you can achieve. Again, Fairleigh Dickinson the second number 16 seed to take over a one seed in the NCAA tournament. These are just a few examples, but you can achieve anything. Negativity is irrelevant. It's just narrow-mindedness. We're here in Dubai. Dubai has been, there's a lot of negativity with Dubai, right? But it's been growing so fast. We've been talking and meeting so many people. Everyone's so positive here. It's hilarious. I was here for like Beyonce. She gave a great concert a few uh, weeks ago, got paid 24 million for one hour. All the Western media hated on her. I gave a few interviews. They didn't even include my interviews because I was positive. A lot of people think a lot about Dubai and the Middle East, but the reality is they're growing so fast. They don't care about the negativity. They laugh at it, right? Like you're surprised at what Dubai is. I'm surprised every time I come here more and more, I'm like, this is crazy. They just don't care about the negativity, right? Is yes. that what you think? Yeah, oh yeah, and it's... We met like a cab driver and he was like, he's working as a cab driver, but he's studying AI in his spare time. And he was amazing. And we had this great conversation with him. It's about education, ambition, positivity, and realizing that you can do anything. This is not 1970, 1950, 1880, where you're born into a situation, you have to do what your parents do. You know, if you're born a slave, you're gonna stay a slave. Like, you're free, you're watching this, you have the internet, you have the ability to grow your mind and grow your skill set. What are those people who were like talking down to you? What are they doing now? They're still in the small town, they're still in that little prison of negativity that they built for themselves, that entraps them. What have you done? You've, you've done the opposite. Yeah, everyone that I know pretty much is still in the same spot that they were five, six, seven years ago. And people, it's it's a lot easier to hate on something and say it's not possible than to really dive deep and put in the work to get to where you want to be. And like for all the haters, right? They're all out there. It's It's so easy just to write a little comment and trick yourself in your mind that no, I'm doing the right thing. I don't need to listen to this. I don't need to take motivation from this. 
because that's what uh, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with this. But, That's what they think. They're keyboard warriors. Yeah, they're just, Again, it's narrow-mindedness. They're trapped yeah. in their own reality. They think this is what life has to be. This is what's possible. Anything else is not possible. But once you get more millionaires, once you get more people breaking the mold, you should start to see anything is possible. Okay? Come to Dubai. Seriously. You start to see what's possible. This city didn't even exist a few decades ago. Do you think they care about the haters? Do you think they care about the negativity? No, they're just building more and more. Every country, every city has issues. Every individual has issues. But you need to rise above that because we are all capable of more than we realize. And we're much more capable of doing great things than other people realize, okay? These negative toxic people, they're always gonna exist wherever you are. There's negative people in Dubai. It's not like it's all like rainbows and sunshine. Um, there is a lot of sunshine, but you know, the point is, is that you really need to recognize and capitalize on all the opportunity. When I say this is the most exciting time in human history, I mean it. I'm not just saying that I'm not BSing you. I've seen so much. I've been to over a hundred countries. I'm very fortunate. Jack's traveling more. He's seeing more now too. The more you open your mind, the more you realize what the world is and what you're capable of, the more you'll actually, you know, rise. And that's the reality of this. We're going to do another video. Click some links below. Wish Jack a happy upcoming birthday. Congratulate him on the Tim success. Tim too. Tim too. It's my upcoming birthday too. We don't talk about that. I'm, I'm too old. <laughs>